Hello everyone, it's Mari here for Honeybee Stamps. I'm going to be creating this card here that you can see on the screen. I'm going to be using the beautiful Adventure Awaits paper pad. Now one of the papers in this pad has these two beautiful images. I'm going to just chop that paper in half and use one uh, piece of this for the base of my card. And then this piece here, I'm actually going to fussy cut around the edges of the florals and foliage that are on that piece. Now what I've done is I have size down the first piece here to just slightly smaller than my A2 size card front. I'm going to adhere that onto my A2 size top folding card base here and that's going to just leave a little bit of a nice white margin around the edge. Now the piece that I did fussy cut I'm going to add some foam adhesive onto the back of that and I'm going to layer it over top of the other piece and what that's going to do is just create this shadowing of the, the base piece there and this top piece is just going to be really nice and dimensional. I love that look. I think it's really cool. Now I took the grape vine wreath die. This is a really cool die set from a few releases ago. And I've die cut that from some watercolor paper twice. And now what I'm going to do is add some distress oxide sprays uh, to the wreath. And I'm going to start off here with frayed burlap. Then I'm going to go in with some lost shadow and just layer up some of these colors just to create this really cool effect. This last one here is, um, I'm just trying to think which one that is. I believe that last one is Vintage Photo. And so I'll just set those off aside to dry. Now this is the Lovely Layers Spring Greenery die set. And I cut out a bunch of the greenery here and I'm going to use some oxide inks to colorize those. I don't know what's going on with that weird imaging that's happening with my media mat here, but there's some sort of weird reflection going on there. So I do apologize for that. So what I'm going to do is take each one of these different colors of oxide ink and I will link all of these different colors up in the description box below in the honeybee shop but I'm just going to take each one of these and put a little bit of these onto my craft mat and then I'll add some water to them and I'll dip the paper into those to add some color. Now each one of these die cut pieces is die cut again from watercolor paper just because I knew that I would be adding quite a bit of water to them I wanted to make sure that I use a paper that would handle that. So I'm just taking the pieces with my tweezers and dipping them into that pigment and the colors that I used are speckled egg aged mahogany iced spruce vintage photo weathered wood and uncharted mariner and like I said I will definitely link up to those below. So I wanted a variety of colors that are going to coordinate with the colors that are in that patterned paper. So I'm going for just kind of like a, a rich burgundy, some grays, some blues, and that kind of thing. Now this is another really great die set from Honeybee. It's called the Whimsical Spring Flowers. Um, this is an older set, but I reach for this set so much, I would call this one of my really most used dies for florals in my honeybee collection and I've die cut out a few of these little pieces of flowers and leaves and again I'm just going to colorize those in the same way that I did with the foliage and this is just going to be a really simple and easy way to add color. Now I wanted to add a little bit of a brighter blue to some of those speckled egg pieces so this is where I added the uncharted mariner and I just really like how that's just a really it's going to dry really dry back really pretty not quite as bright as you see it here and it actually complements the darker blue that's in the colors from that pattern paper really nicely and I didn't really care if the colors mixed on these different pieces like some of the pieces I miss mixing the aged mahogany with the vintage photo and so on it didn't really matter to me I just wanted the colors to look interesting and pretty and I really wanted them to have just kind of like that water colored look one of the things that I did with this process is I did ensure that I allowed these to dry um, really well, obviously, but mostly just air dry. I might have used a little bit of my heat tool at the very end, but mostly these were dried just by air drying. So I did them and then I walked away from my desk and I went and did something else while these finished drying. Now that everything's all dry and I'm ready to assemble my project and what I did with the two wreaths that I created is I just took some glue dots and I added that to three different little areas. I folded the glue dots over 
multiple times to make them really dimensional. And you can't see them, unlike foam adhesive, that'd be really hard to do on these fine little areas. Um, but there's enough dimension with those folded over glue dots that it did allow me to um, add some dimension between these layers of the wreath and then also on the back of the wreath to add it to the card front. So I just like how this finishes off this piece. I, thought, I just thought it made it look even just a little bit more rustic and cool. And so that's why I was going for adding that wreath onto this project. Now I'm starting to assemble things. So you can see that I've added that one little flower above the flower that's part of the patterned paper, just to kind of create a little floral cluster. I did not add any color to the little centers, center die cut pieces of these flowers, just because I wanted them to, that that um, center area to be really stark white and you can just see I'm adding a little bit more of that aged mahogany to the edge of this flower here and I did that with the other flower as well just to really define the edges of that little bloom adding a little bit of foam adhesive to the backs of those little flowers just to pop them up and then again I will add a little white center to this second little flower here as well and then I just added more of those foliage pieces that I have die cut and just added them in to kind of create more of those really pretty colors from that pattern paper. Lots of the pattern paper gets covered up, but it's just to really provide a really cool background for this project. The project has lots of dimension. It has lots of really pretty soft watercolor look to it. And I just really liked the overall look of this when it's finished. So adding a couple of those watercolored leaves in as well, just for a little bit of extra texture and some more of the layers that I'm adding in here. Just going ahead with my honeybee liquid glue and my tweezers to add these other little pieces in as well. So I'll just secure another leaf in there. I'm now going to take some glossy accents and add that to the center of the flower. And this next product that I'm going to add in here is a product called Prills. And the prills that I used, I'm just trying to see if I still have the container on my desk. Um, I don't remember the color of prills I used here. They're just kind of like a gold and brown mix, but I just scooped some up and put them over top of that glue. And they just are, create a really dimensional and interesting center for those flowers. Now I'm using a little bit of white paint to splatter over top of the entire project here and that's just going to add that little bit of extra texture as well. Now I used the Thinking of You Big Time Stamp and Coordinating die set to create the sentiment for this project. I stamped the sentiment out in gray ink and I stamp also die cut out just white cardstock from that Thinking of You die three times. So in fact we're going to get four layers. So I've glued the three blank layers together and now I'm going to glue this fourth layer on top and this is like I said just going to create this really really dimensional sentiment for the front of our card. I did the same thing with the word of which is die cut separately from the thinking and you and I'm going to put that kind of on an angle on the front of my card to finish it off. Friends, I did link up to all of the different products that I used for this card in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you were inspired and I really enjoyed making this for you today. I'm just showing you, I added another little piece of foliage in there on the left. Have an amazing day friends and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.